Well, and I say we're going to be going over what's going on with options, both uh, what's happening with the, the claims process. We'll get all questions answered on that. And then how that rolls right into the new round with the snapshot on the 21st. Then um, we're just going to do a quick overview of like a the, the kind of a snapshot of the remaining dig that are left in the treasury. Cause I know that's been a topic of, of some uh, conversation in past calls, just to kind of give a, give a sense of where we are after all the positive rebases and what dig is left after, uh, after this round of options. And we're going to get uh, Mitch, who's one of the, the head developers at, at Badger up to talk about some changes um, be pushing through to the Oracle, going back to, to Chainlink. And then we're going to, if you have any time left after that, we're going to talk about sort of like the case for DIG governance or what 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 are some aspects uh, of DIG that, that may require additional governance, uh, especially like with the stability vault and other things that, that are coming down the road. So it's it's a jam-packed uh, DIG dojo today. Thanks, everyone, for coming. I think Tom Zoex will be here uh, shortly to, to do the POAP. And... Um, but we got a lot to, to talk about today. So, Wizik, uh, do you want to get us started with uh, what's happening with options? Yeah, that makes sense. And I, honestly, we should we should talk about TCL too if we have a chance. But let's just we'll take this one at a time. So, options um, is obviously most top of mind. Um, I mean, first off, very like very exciting that we unlocked eighty eight percent, even with uh, changed equilibrium. I think it was still majority positive rebases. I think there's only four or five equilibrium days. So super awesome, super exciting. I mean, I think it was like 2.5 million at roughly 1,900 wallets. It's like 13, 1,400 dollars payout per per user on average. I know that's not the same for everyone, but still pretty, pretty, pretty epic first use case of KPI options. And and I think what most of everyone here has seen is we've been kind of building the plane while we're trying to fly it. So I appreciate everybody's patience um, throughout this, going back to the first one to then switching it to run in perpetuity. Um, and I think what we'll talk about today a little bit, both in what happened yesterday and also how we plan to iterate even further in round four, um, everyone will will hopefully appreciate. So yesterday, we everything was kind of like back to back to back and it, high gas prices didn't help the situation at all. But, um, you know, obviously everybody was able to claim their options yesterday uh, and then redeemed them. There was a slight hiccup with the claiming if you didn't have any rewards that were like native, like if you didn't have any badger or dig or sushi or something, if you were just, if you just bought dig like a month before and had literally nothing else to claim, the rewards button was not highlighting at first. That's That's been fixed. Um, and you should go, you should go uh, add some funds to the badger sets because they're really, you have dig and you're not taking advantage of boost then that's another topic for another time but um nonetheless uh if you only had options to claim that was a there was a glitch there that's been corrected so that should no longer be the case the second thing that happened was that the redemption was paying out about 44 percent less than dig.finance was showing and i'm going to do my best to explain this and mitch feel free to jump in the issue was essentially that the redemption so the initial options payout going back to april um and the contract associated was the price proposal was basically uh one option equal 0 0.001 bdig um and based on the 88 percent unlocked that came to like 0 0.008 something 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 i put it in the rebase thread but obviously 88 percent of that number um and this, and then when we allocated the additional uh, B dig from BIP sixty six to that pool, that was updated in Dig Finance, but that price proposal did not change off that point zero zero one. It should have been like point zero zero. And I'm just approximating here, but like point zero zero one five or something afterwards, or point zero zero one four. Um, and that would have that difference is the forty four percent delta that people saw when they redeemed their options i believe the right path and just just kind of speaking very objectively and transparently as i'm <clears throat> understanding this now i think the right path would have actually been for us to keep that as a constant 0 0.001 bdig um, and increase the options to account for that 
We did the reverse. We did the inverse of that. We just increased the option price to account for that, which is why when you go to dig.finance, it showed essentially that being more, more than 1.001 BDIG. Regardless, <clears throat> the, the, the delta that needs to be continued, needs to be dropped to the users is roughly a 44% difference across the entire across the entire board, top to bottom. And that comes to about 92 B dig. And the solution is that the team is going to add that to the claim rewards and just distribute that difference to everybody. Um, I don't know when it'll happen, but obviously that's that's uh, that's owed due to the unlocking of the options mining program. And want to just at least start in explaining that. Um, Mitch, feel free to jump in if I if I butchered that. I hope I did <laughs> it somewhat justice. No, but. no, that was that was good. Um, yeah, like like was said, um, we're going to be airdropping. Well, not airdropping, adding it to the rewards tree uh, for users to claim as B dig. Um, and we already have the calculations done. We just need to um, actually perform the. Uh, Merkle proof calculation and uh, upload it to the tree and assign the rewards accordingly. And full transparency, I think this was my fault. Um, I, I I think that I was I, we should have increased the options to account for that change, and I instead assumed that we could increase the value of the long tokens that was redeemed for the or the the options that was redeemed for the B dig. I assumed that that could be worth more than that that price proposal. So. Um, so obviously in the future, we can correct for this and for now, you know, um, again, apologies if, if this was something I should have caught, I, I, I'm going to take it on myself. It's just something that I probably should have caught and, uh, adjusted the options accordingly, but, you know, we're, we're still going to get the, everything claimed out or, you know, give everybody a chance to cover that and get their, the B dig that they're, they're owed for that. So, and there's, there's no need to rush out and do it today so if you have other rewards that you want to claim i believe the we have up to 60 days before so you you have time so don't don't rush out obviously high gas prices are causing issues for everyone not just individual users but even you know teams trying to airdrop and do other stuff so you know high gas prices aren't fun so there's no need to run out and do it today if you don't do it it doesn't impact your options for the next round again options in round four are based on your dig positions they're not based on the options you hold so if you you could theoretically let your options sit there for 30 days and then if you got options in the next round you could claim those options and you could do it all together so it's whatever your preference is but there's no need to exercise your options the same way you would like a like like a standard option or call option or something those options are available for the next um, 60 days to claim your b dig um, at your at your discretion so if you want to wait for gas prices to go down, by all means. Could we just go through quickly the steps that people need to take? This was put out in the in the um, communication that went out yesterday, but just, just to go over it, I think it makes sense to, while we have everyone on here, answer their questions about what the users should do. Yeah. So the it's a, it's a two-step process, which, again, the idea is that you want to issue the options a long time before the redemption so that when we talk about round four hopefully this is one of the things we can solve but but right now the options were issued and then they're like literally a few hours later the redemption process um, was in effect so essentially you have to go to the badger you know where you claim rewards and you would claim your rewards like you would anything else for sushi badger dig and included in that are your options um, and so when you claim the rewards you have your options. Um, I think William sent out an announcement where you can see the contract and you can add that token to your MetaMask wallet so you can see the actual options in your MetaMask wallet. Then you go to the dig portion of the badger.finance page and there's a little button in the top right corner where you can redeem them. And that's where your options are uh, paid out for the B dig. Now, that process will, will pay out again, the, there'll be 44% less there so when you if if you were waiting until like once the uh, additional 92 b dig are added to the claim rewards technically the process will look something like you'll get a portion of b dig there but you'll still need to redeem your options and get the rest of your b dig there as well i hope i 
if that made sense. So should you? So should so this is this is a question that I have saw some other people in the in the Discord had it. So I claim <clears> my <throat> badger awards that include <clears throat> adoptions. Um, so yeah. I those in my wallet, and then I go to the digs, and you do that just through app.badger.finance through the main badger. App. Then to redeem them, you go to .badger.finance forward slash dig and click redeem dropped. And so should should people so I like personally I have I'm seeing the options in my wallet and it's giving me a button to redeem them. And then when I click that, it's a, it's sending a transaction to my MetaMask, but actually nothing is popping up in my MetaMask. So I so I saw someone else was having that issue and I was too like it, we supposed to wait until the corresponding VDIG number gets updated. Is that turned off intentionally so people don't redeem the wrong amount or what's what's going on with that? So I don't, I don't know if I can speak to that issue particularly at this moment, just because I don't know anything about it. But it sounds like there might be a support issue there. Um, but the way it worked for me is when I went to the redeem button, I clicked it, and then I got the 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 commensurate amount of B dig that for my options. Um, again, excluding like there's still this this delta that we were accounting for that that B dig will come straight through the rewards. This gets a little bit confusing. If we just t taking that aside for a minute, let's just assume that was not an issue at all. And the options price proposal matched the B dig redemption exactly. Then you would you would claim your options, you'd go to the redemption, you'd have your B dig. Um, it sounds like in your case, Wasabi, there might be a, a technical issue there that I I don't know if I can answer right now or but um, but that's how it should work. And then now, because those options were were overestimated in dig finance, and we need we need to cover that delta, which is a forty four percent delta. The that difference in B dig, we're not going to mint more options and then have you go through that same two step process. So that B dig is just going to come straight out through the claim reward. So technically, if you were to wait, let's just say hypothetically, twenty four hours from now, and the the difference is already added to the claim rewards. You, and you're probably going to see something like when you go to claim your awards, you're probably going to see something like you're going to see your options and you're probably going to see some B dig. Um, and that's just the difference. You don't, you don't want to stop there. You still want to go um, to the redeem button and take the options and then claim the rest of your B dig there too. It's just that you're going to see B dig when you claim the rewards. And then you're also going to see the B dig when you redeem for your options. Okay. So it's, it really doesn't matter if you redeem now and then get the additional B dig in a in the reward window or just wait and get the additional B dig through this redeem interface. Is that yeah, correct? So Mitch, feel free to there are two separate things. So the airdrop of the delta of the owed B dig, um, that will be just dropped and claimable as B dig in your rewards, like you would claim your badger or dig or sushi, X sushi or or whatever. Um, in order to redeem the dropped, um, you have to go through the two-step process that was just explained. Okay, so you do have to do it both ways. You know, it's not gonna it's not gonna show up in the dig interface if I wait. Correct. Got it. Okay. Cool. Are there any other um, chat out any other kind of tactical questions about redeeming the options and how that works? I'm trying to go to the questions real quick myself. See if there's anything there. I'm not seeing um, anything now. I, I will say this is kind of like there's a lot coming to a point right now because then obviously the next round four starts tomorrow. The snapshot should theoretically start today. Um, I'm of the mind that like this like so first off, the snapshot that takes place today is just it's not looking at new positions it's just looking at previous position like your current position compared to the start of the last event for option holders and it just informs whether or not you carry over options i don't see any reason why we can't hold that tomorrow versus today just to let everybody kind of get through this if there's no if there's no uh concerns with that i just in, in the event that somebody might have been I don't know. I, I just don't want to. I don't want to overcomplicate today, and then also have a snapshot on top of that. So I don't know if anybody has any reasons to feel differently, but um, I know William suggested it 
in a separate channel. And I think it's a it's a fair suggestion just so everybody can kind of feel comfortable prior to the snapshot. We don't want anybody to feel like it's it's all happening at once. And then for some reason, the snapshot didn't include all their holdings because they were in the middle of trying to claim some of their dig, which accounted for something they had already sold or something. I don't know. Sure. So that sounds good. I guess it's like, you know, drop us a note in your in the chat. I don't see any reason to uh, to be opposed to that. But if anyone is, just send us a message. Okay. Um, actually, I'll, I'll put something there just so we can vote on maybe in a second. Uh, or if somebody wants to put a, a note in the discussion that just says snapshot today, tomorrow, maybe we could just do some simple emoji voting. It could be a, but I'm, I'm of the mind that it's better to wait just, just to kind of ensure there's nothing, nothing complicated for people or nothing messed up for anyone here. So if that's, if there's any other questions on the current options round, I'll, I'll pause for any questions. If not, I can move to round four and discuss a little bit about that and just how this kind of with the snapshot, how we might delay it, but then also some changes we'd like to make and how we think we'd like to improve this next round, um, if that sounds good to everyone. So I, the the nice thing about options is that you can do stuff retroactively. And one of the things that Gasudo, myself, and Omnifarious have been trying to do is enhance everything. Like I think there's two things we want to enhance. We want to automate the snapshots because Today, it's just a very manual process that involves me gathering tons of queries, normalizing these queries, creating one massive data hub, data table, and then doing that every two weeks and then running it through a model. And that's not fun. It's also not transparent. And we want to be able to provide better data to everyone real time. And also, just frankly, I would prefer not to do that every two weeks. So Gasudo has got, uh, he's got a script. It would actually bypass Dune. And it's a really... I think it's actually really awesome and we're working on it now and for this reason there might be a a one to two or a few day lag here as we get round four going but the idea is that it looks at everything in epochs and so if you have all 2000 addresses that hold dig or whatever it is 3000 4000 it would actually look at every address that has dig um and normalize it and so for each op so if it it would, it would show you the total 100% top to bottom. And then for each epoch, like one, two, three, four, five, it would show you the relative change. And so you could conceivably do a lot more with this. You could create like averages. You could show, we could add like trend charts to dig.finance where if somebody puts in their address, it could show the relative amount of dig they own percent uh, compared to the market cap. It could also show their holdings day over day or week over week so if people are curious if like hey did my dig go down or up am i going to be you know faulted for you know it, it would it would provide a lot of transparency and then we could also flag the dates that we did snapshots in the past so if someone's like hey i didn't sell dig they could go back and be like okay well here was snapshot one here was snapshot two your relative holdings went up or down so this is going to this is going to provide, I think, two things. I think one, actually three things. One, it's going to provide a ton more transparency to the community. Two, it's going to automate this and allow us to have much more sophisticated snapshots. Um, and part of that transparency is going to allow us a lot more just dashboards and trend analysis and things that we can connect to dig.finance over time. And then lastly, this kind of goes into the third point about treasury. Um, as a sanity check, it's, we're going to include every single eyes the whole dig would include like multi-sig, escrow accounts, you know, badger tree, things that we have earmarked for emissions. And it'll give us one of the things I've been trying to do is basically create a balance sheet for dig and get all of that like assets and liabilities clearly marked. So we know exactly how much dig we have remaining to like a very precise amount. And this will actually give us a really easy way to do it because by subtraction we can just take out the wallets that are contracts that we know are not part of the options protocol and then that that should be essentially what we have available in the treasury. So I don't know, Gasudo, if you want to, I think you're on the call. If you want to jump up and talk a little bit more about this, you're the mastermind behind it. Like you're the one that basically a, approached Omni and I about this suggestion. And, um, you know, I probably didn't do it justice. So if you want to chat a little bit about it, I'm happy to give you a moment to explain it a little bit better. But I think this is a, a huge next step and improving the options for a lot of reasons that I just mentioned. I think he's a uh, wasabi. If you can 
light them up. There hey, Gasudo. Hey, everyone. What's up? Yeah. You guys hear me all right? Yeah, yeah, loud and clear. Um, thanks, uh, Wesley. No, actually, I think you did do it justice. Um, there's, um, it's exactly that. So problem with the June queries we've been running so far is that June has some troubles with the fact that DIG is uh, rebasing. So if you really want to get technical, what June sees is it sees the transaction from one address to another, and it thinks that that's the balance of that address, even though rebasing takes place and um, a whole different amount might go out instead of what went in. Obviously, you know, there's there's workarounds for that, and that's what been what we've deployed so far. But um, it's it's costing us a lot of effort to, to get to the actual numbers. So what I've um, what I'm doing now is bypassing June completely and um, just checking the status of these balances on the blockchain itself, which yeah saves us a ton of time and makes it possible to create yeah basically a snapshot of all the snapshots. <laughs> And uh, yeah, indeed, opening um, the door to more possibilities there, instead of working with um, a starting balance and uh, an ending balance. Yeah, we can even see what the trend within a certain time period is. Um, yeah, there's just more more options, to, more possibilities there to see what what exactly uh, happened. Um, and indeed, we can do. Um, uh, some sanity checks, make sure that the total supply is the total supply. We can include um, uh, addresses which we haven't included so far, such as the treasury and other um, addresses which are um, which are in the Badger system itself. The one challenge too, I think, and Kasud, I didn't mention this. I don't know if if you want to chat a little bit about it. Is he's trying to figure out how to do this? Um, would be including Binance Smart Chain, and so. Um, that's what that's what he's working on right now. So this could, I, you know, Gasudo earlier is like, yeah, it'd probably take a couple of days. I'm gonna assume like it could take longer, just given the nature of everything. I feel like is always many things and fire drills coming in. But the idea is that if everybody's comfortable with this idea, I think it's it's worth it because we can retroactively apply it back, and then, but it might mean that we don't update the dig finance page for for a bit to give this some time to, to run our next round four off of this, this much better um, kind of data hub of dig dot dig, you know, balances across the entire ecosphere. It, and it gives us so much, it's, it's not just transparent, actually, it's going to give us a lot of, it's like going to give us Lego building blocks to enhance options. There's a lot more things we can do. We don't have to just look at snapshots, um, static ones, but we could look at like rolling averages. We could look at, Additional actions that we want to factor in that could uh, that could change. Um, we could create a ton of different charts that people could put their address in on dig.finance and see like you know what their positions are relative to everything. Um, it's going to give us a chance to get a much better purview into our balance sheet for dig. So I think there's just a ton of wins across the board, which is why I, I think it makes sense to give us some time to get this out, even if it means that we can't update round four options for for a bit here, because it's going to improve the process tremendously in this next round. Do you have any more visibility onto if we're going to be going monthly or if we're going to change it to quarterly or extend it to a longer so, time frame? <clears throat> so there's three, the, yes, that, that's a great point. So there's three big things that I I'm trying to like get done with options personally. I think one is what we just mentioned is improving the snapshot, the source data. The second, which this is more on something omni omnifarious and I've been starting on is transitioning my Excel models to dig.finance and programming them. In. And so a few weeks back, I rebuilt them so that they're much more structured. And then we're starting to work on that. But that's probably going to take some effort that I don't want to speak to because it's that's a complicated process in and of itself. And then the third is we want to we want to extend the timeout. Like, you know, standard options cycles can be three months. Right now we're doing every 30 days. That, you know, that creates a lot more issues. And I and I think that we'd have to consider the mechanics of this because we'd have to change the 30 day unlock to be like 60 days or 90 days. So there's more to to factor in here. I don't know if we can do it this round, and it might make sense to start it clean 
in October so we can do like a Q4 cycle. But um, but the reality is the reality is I think we need to extend the options time period, and that that will allow for options to unlock, um, say within the first two weeks or something. And then if we mint the options and provide options in week three or week four, then people are going to hold options for two more months before redemption period. And that's going to, that's going to avoid the whole scenario we had yesterday where like, it's like, you know, day 28, day 29, we're minting the options. We're, and then day 30, we're, we're redeeming them. Like, I think the whole idea is you want to create a time period where people actually have the options, they hold them. Um, and, and then also it just, it spreads out the process. It creates a much more, you know, there's other things you can build on, on top of it. You can do on top of it. So um, I, I think it would be like, if again, if we just think about trying to improve versus do everything at once, like my goal right now is focusing on what Casuto is doing, um, which probably means we'll have to stick with the 30 day period this round. But I would like in October to switch to a three month period coupled with potentially moving the Excel models to dig.finance too. So then not just the snapshots, but everything, the modeling, everything could be super visible for everybody to see. Um, and, and that would be, you know, just from my personal standpoint, that would be my goal in the next couple of months to try to, I think if, I think if we got to that point where snapshots were transparent and automated, everything was programmed into dig.finance for the modeling and we stretched it over a three month period, then it all of a sudden becomes much more scalable. It all of a sudden becomes much less, uh, it doesn't require nearly the manual labor that it does today. It's a very, it's a very time intensive process for a few people. And ideally we would like to create this as a product that can work and is viable that doesn't require immense overhead. Yeah. I just, I, I mean, I just want to say I strongly support moving it to quarterly because just, just on the, on the, the fact that you know we're a very small team, we're doing this as community members. Like there's you know there's limited uh, development resources to it, and like if you think back over all the past dig dojos, how much time we've devoted to, to the options, it's like been most of most of what we're focused on with dig, right? And like we got to get free up some bandwidth to get more use cases. We've got to get you know, Lego blocks building on top of dig. We've got to get dig circulating more in DeFi. Those are all like the stage two. You know, we've got to figure out the stability vault and get governance around. Like we have a lot to do on Dig, and we need to have options as part of a mechanism that's like in the background running and is part of the like infrastructure and plumbing of Dig. But we've got to get developer time and community time and all of us free up some time to focus on the future of Dig and where it's going after this. There's a lot to do. I, I agree with what you're saying. And for context, like Badger's the only one doing this. I mean, like everybody's written about KPI options, everybody's talking about them and how they could be this great use case, but like Dig is iterating real time. And like, we're basically figuring out the special sauce to create a viable product. And I think someone asked, does Uma help with this work? They, they help with like the contract minting, but no, like we're, we're creating a strategy that's basically like a viable product, in my opinion. I think that like the idea is that if, if other people wanna do this, like Badger's going to be the team that's going to basically be like, yeah, they can do it and do it successfully unless you want to go through six months of pain like they did to get to this point. And you have one or two people that are willing to contribute immense amount of hours to focus on figuring out how to get everything just right. And so, yeah, I agree, I agree with what you're saying. I think this is going to get us to that point. The other thing, too, just for everybody so they're aware, obviously, I'm, I'm fully aware that we unlocked 88% of the options, which means that there's only 12% in the rewards pool. Um that's going to require us to allocate probably one to two percent more from a BIP. That's something I've got on my radar that it can be done retroactively. My goal has been mostly to see this through and get the treasury really, really well like aligned. Um, I know in the past there's been discussions. This kind of shifts over into the third point, Wasabi, about like how much how much dig is left in the treasury. So we've got the TCL ready to go. I think the script is done. It's denominated into BTC. But the, the short of it is, is after the TCL is loaded and accounting for some past liabilities that may owe DIG, um, and then building in a hedge and making some conservative assumptions and also factoring in things like, is 
dig an escrow available or not. It, the reality is it's not really available at this moment, but um, but there's more than enough dig available. It's probably five, six percent, seven percent if you include the unavailable dig and total supply in the treasury. So we've got we've got enough dig to to more than you know pass one or two poor one or two more percent of total supply into options. But we've also got to try to figure out how to make sure you know, the next coming rounds can continue to support, you know, a payout. And that's also why shifting to a three month program versus like a one month is more practical because um, it incentivizes behaviors over a longer period and also more efficiently emits the dig versus like every 30 days. So a, a lot more, I, I, I'll just say this, there's a lot more to come on round four. It's not that any of it is being like pushed aside or forgotten. It's just that there's a lot to do in general. And so uh, my DMs are always open. I'm always happy to chat. When people have questions in rebase, I try to get in there and answer them. Although I'm Pacific time, so it's usually a little bit later in the day for me. But all these things are being super, like we're, we're well aware of all of them and we want to make sure it works in the next round. It's just uh, back to my first point, it's like buying a, flying a plane and trying to build it at the same time. So uh, I'll stop talking there. I hope that helps explain kind of round four, a little bit about the dig treasury. Um, and just kind of like the next steps we've got here on the agenda in the next coming days and weeks to kind of help continue to improve and get this going. Awesome. Should we talk about the Oracle now? I think, I think we should, because this is a, a, just, I'll let Mitch talk about it if he's here still. Let me see. Yeah. But this is a huge win. So thanks to Mitch. Thanks to Chainlink. Um, but I'm very excited about this. So Mitch, if you want to chat about it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know how deep into detail you want me to go about why we had um, switched away from it before, but uh, just the high level um, overview of, of the history of the Oracle is that when DIG was launched, we had a um, centralized Oracle that Badger ran. Um, we took the uh, TWAP, which is a time-weighted average price of the past 24 hours of DIG um, on Sushi swap and Uniswap uh, average those out and and use that to determine the Oracle pricing of Dig for that day. Um, sometime back a few months ago, we had we had moved to Chainlink. Uh, there was a big article about it, and they utilized a VWAP, which is a volume weighted average price. Um, which was fine when it originally launched, but as Dig got smaller and smaller in total supply, there were issues with the volume that was generated. And uh, some data providers that Chainlink uses had uh, data coming from sites like gate.io, which had about, I don't know, $5,000 worth of liquidity, but somehow was doing $300,000 worth of volume a day, um, which was, really affecting the legitimacy of the, the volume weighted average pricing. Um, the community did notice this and there was probably one, one rebase that was affected by it. Um, but when we noticed this, uh, we moved back to the centralized Oracle and we've been running that ever since. Um, I took that time to work with Chainlink to get their data providers cleaned up. Um, so now uh, that the volume is increased and they've cleaned up some information um, from their data providers, we uh, have the opportunity to move back to Chainlink. Um, they also set a, okay, yeah, Wasabi just posted the background there. Um, they also have uh, a trigger for the uh, VWAP. If, if the volume falls below a specific level, um, which Chainlink monitors in the background, their data providers will switch to a, a time-weighted average price um, so the volume can't be affected by um, these wash trades. So uh, the long and the short of it is, is that we will be moving back to Chainlink, um, which allows us to utilize the um, Stability Vault and have uh, some really nice data from some trusted and reliable data providers that's decentralized um, and not reliant on Badger to um, provide that information. Is that a perfect? <laughs> is that a, a good explanation? Um, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, I mean, I is think there a, some, what? Go ahead, Rosabi. Oh, this is just more like tech. Is there a trigger for when it would go back to the um, time weighted or 
what's the if there like just to have visibility on when that would switch if, if it has to switch back uh they have um something in the background they haven't i asked for like a um, exact trigger which i'm still waiting on um a response from but it's it's falling below a certain volume over the monitor exchanges uh that are that are marked as reliable so it is looking at centralized too yes yeah yeah there's nothing inherently wrong with centralized exchanges um you know anybody's free to list dig and trade dig and the, that data should come into account because it's the market. But um, you know, when when it's something that is like obviously pretty suspect, where there's you know ten times the amount of volume of the actual liquidity that's on a place, that that's when um, we need to clean that data. Do we have any data about just just kind of a tangent, but like? How much dig is traded on these centralized exchanges and how does that interact with the options program I mean, because the options and rewards is very much like DeFi centric they're they're how, how does that well, interact if you're trading dig on the there? vast majority of the volume is on sushi sushi swap right now um yeah. the coin gecko has uh information on this and and really gate.io is the only centralized exchange um which has been removed from the calculation. Um, <clears> but yeah, the, the data providers won't won't utilize gate.io. Got it. So it's not really an issue. Mm-hmm. We think you're gonna say so something too. No, no, I was just saying I think uh, I'm just just trying to think quick uh quick inventory of where we're at. So I think uh the VWAP change is good. I guess my last question is do you know when this actually is taking place, Mitch? Like when the actual change goes into effect? So the Chainlink Oracle is live and ready now, and it'll update every day. Um, the cutover just needs to be coordinated with, um, you know, the front end team and the back end team, in order to uh, have everything visualized correctly. So we don't have, you know, an or- Oracle price from the centralized Oracle um, on the front end when we're really utilizing the back end uh, Chainlink. So it'll just be in the next couple of days, um, and we'll make an announcement when we do so. Perfect. Um, so I know, and we have about fifteen minutes left. So uh, just quick summary here: everybody's got, everybody understands how to redeem their options. The the delta will come into the claim rewards later today. If you're jumping on, again, um, this is this is my fault for not understanding that the proposal price is going to be over point zero zero one B dig. Um, going forward, we'll adjust the options to account for this and make sure that this is not an issue in the future. In terms of round four, we should have a better snapshot process here in the next coming days or week or week or so, which in turn will allow us to update dig.finance a few days down the road. Um, so there'll be a bit of a delay there, but I think it's a worthwhile one. Also snapshot, I don't know if there's any response, but I think unless there's any Unless anybody DMs me or says, no, I, I really think we should move the snapshot to tomorrow just to give everybody this day to kind of figure everything out. I don't think that'll delay anything else. So um, I, I would just say let's plan on moving the snapshot to tomorrow. Um, and then the VWAP change. Is there anything else here that I'm I'm missing? I, I, well, I guess TCL. Does anybody? Just in the, in the chat, talk- Pasher had a question for Mitch about yeah. um, the process for adding additional like if dig pops up on a different centralized or other uh dexes what what is the process for adding or subtracting data sources so in with chainlink they have data providers which go and monitor um where trades are being done uh with with dig and you know with everything else that's given uh price feeds uh through chainlink uh so these data providers are the ones that curate and maintain those lists. Um, so as volume appears on different exchanges, um, those data providers will be adding them to their reports. And then Chainlink um, kind of aggregates those reports and and uses the aggregate as a, uh, a piece of information that they provide to us. And the data providers are incentivized by, you know, um, well, de- disincentivized from lying or, or providing bad data um, by, uh, you know, they have to stake a link 
and they can be slashed. So it's basically the data provider's decision what's a Correct. reliable source in it. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's seven data providers for the Chainlink, uh, for the dig price feed on Chainlink. So it's kind of like a consensus of those seven, um, which which leads to the aggregate data that's provided to us. Uh, I don't know the process, Kilo, um, of us becoming dig data providers. Uh, they're typically like like people, or, or not people, they are typically like companies that specialize in this. Um, you can see uh, Chainlink has like Chain.link um, as their main site, and they have uh, some information there of like data providers for the Bitcoin, um, you know, price feed. And you can get examples of of the types of companies that run these. Well, any other questions on the Oracle stuff? I'm not seeing anything. So yeah, uh, music. Do you want to get us started? I mean, I know there, there's a lot of um, a lot of things going on. Stability Vault, integrations, um, more community stuff, next steps for DIG. I mean, these are all questions that we need to be spending more time on and figuring out what what are the what is kind of the purview of DIG governance and what is the kind of dirty, quick and dirty governance that we can bootstrap now versus what is the idealized governance we wanna we would need, you know, in the future as DIG grows. So this is, you know, really an open question, but I think, you know, Weezik and I were chatting yesterday and just wanted to kind of see what is chat about, like, what are the immediate next steps and governance questions that we see in front of DIG going forward, um, which I think starts with some of the parameters of the stability vault stuff. But um, Weezik, I don't know, I'm curious to get your thoughts on, on that. What are the kind of like immediate governance questions that are coming down the road for DIG? Whoops, do we lose Weezik? I think we lost Weezik. Um, let's see, 1500 Badger, I see you're here. Um, you had some thoughts on the, the stability vault and parameters. I mean, if you ask, let's see, he's right here. Um, if you ask me, it's the, the parameters of the stability vault that are going to be the kind of initial governance question. And what are we going to, what are we going to use to make that decision? It could be just, you know, outsourced to Badger governance. It could be done uh, with voting based on how much dig someone holds or it could be something else i mean see why we couldn't have like oap voting based on community membership i mean there's, there's a lot of you know quick and dirty and more involved things we could we could do um before launching a separate dig governance token so music looks like you're back on what are your thoughts on uh, the immediate governance questions facing us yeah so i think i think token would be the last of things we do. I, I I think process is the first, and like if so, there's a lot there's a lot of questions to be answered here. But it, but let's just look at the reality and like look at this just practically what we need today. As Dig grows, like we have a host of things. Like there's we've talked about options. We're talking about TCL, VWAP, maintenance, oracles. There's almost like a need for more people just to stay in tune to Digs to kind of like help answer questions. There's stability vault questions. There's like there's there's you know right now this is all kind of being done by like like a couple people um like very few of us like um we kind of like six or seven different hats on and so i, I would think that the first step here is just trying to better expand into it could be setting up a kind of like a dedicated dig kind of fan club discord channel where we've got like more channels that people can go in and support things on like options for instance or uh treasury or just you know whatever it could be like i think we need to structure ourselves there first i think another step that's really easy that we could take is uh like maybe using dig and snapshot you know for some things like stability vault that are very you know not everything because i think badger is still important to snapshot with your Badger tokens, but maybe we could do a couple snapshots with DIG. I think we've got to get the DIG treasury really cleaned up and lined up to like very clearly understand what our assets and liabilities are and have a very clear balance sheet and then start thinking about how we're going to diversify and build runway. There's just, there's a lot of things that we could do long before we think about launching a token. And that's just my opinion. I just, if we launch a token and put it out into the ecosphere, 
it's there forever. And if we haven't thought about all the support structure we need to go around it and ensure its success, then it's it could be quite a bit of a failure. And so I think we focus on the process and all these other things first. And, um, and you know, I probably, like, look, Badger has kind of an incubator process with zero down, and maybe this is kind of follows the same. And maybe there's, I, again, I don't want to speak for Badger here at all, but maybe there's a, an idea where Badger can also provide, you know, um, I mean, they've basically already provided a lot through TCL. So I don't, I don't know if that's even the right approach, but like, as we try to get dig stood up, we need to think about more things to support it other than just, um, just a few people doing it. And so that's, that was, that's what I would like to see first and foremost, because that will evolve more into building a community. And then if we have a governance token, you know, just like any other governance token, you can have early contributor support. You know, like you can you can allocate five percent of it to go to people that were helping support during this build process. You know, you can allocate some of it to the Badger Treasury. You can allocate some of it to partners like Uma and others that we could airdrop it to. So I think that's my thinking in it. But again, like Zero DAO is a great example. They've they've been doing all this for a long time now, and they still haven't airdropped a token yet. They're working on it, and so I think to me the token is the last piece of the puzzle. Um, so. Does that answer your question, Wasabi? It does. Yeah, I, I would really love to get some other members of the community up here to to see what they think. Poops trying to. I saw you had your hand up earlier. I'm inviting you. you look like you had something to say, but I, I'm just curious what people think are like the immediate priorities. I mean, we had that vote about like a long term uh, roadmap for Dig that was happening during the middle of the options process. We had about five or six different ideas there that that people um, did an emoji vote on. Um, I know we've got, in my mind, it would, it would probably be the stability vault. That's the thing I'm most interested in seeing. And I think that can like really bootstrap Dick's growth going forward. Like if it was better maintaining around peg, then we could get it in other BTC ind in indexes around DeFi. Like that's, that's my initial thought, but I have no idea what you guys think. I, I want to hear what, what, what the community thinks about this. Poopster, what's going on? I don't think we can hear you, Poopster. Yeah, Poopster, you might be muted or something. I mean, and this is this is kind of like the going back to the stability vault and, and what 1500 was talking about last week uh, last week is the stability vault is think of it as a whale that's trading dig, right? And that whale could have different objectives, all right? Those objectives could be to stack BTC. Those objectives could be to stack DIG. They could be to keep DIG more stabilized or, you know, depress the volatility for DIG. And all those, you know, it's really like a opinionated economic question that has to do with like your interest as a DIG holder, your interest as a Badger DAO holder. Like, do you want to see Badger DAO? Custodian of DIG stacking BTC, or do you want to see DIG growing more explosively to the upside? Right. Like these are all kind of like opinionated preferences that should be expressed by governance. And how you balance that, the interests of DIG holders versus Badger holders, is something that really needs to be kind of thought through very carefully in this process, as far as I'm concerned. Can y'all hear me now? Yep. Okay, great. Welcome back. Um, thanks. Love Discord. Uh, I actually wanted to highlight all the success we've had or uh, that Dig has had with the KPI options. And um, I think that I think that there's a lot to be said there because uh, I feel like the team worked really, really hard to kind of tweak this and figure it out and not just, uh, you know, uh, it, it would have been easy to give up on it, I believe. Um, but I, I feel like that... Uh, in working with it, you know, we've come across a, a like a like you said earlier, we've kind of solved this this puzzle, and I think that's really really neat. Um, my, I actually wanted to, uh, and I, I asked this before, but I, I I would be very interested in um, like us going into uh, the Superhuman's uh, server for an AMA or a community call or something, and kind of discuss how we've had such uh good success with these kpi options 
Um, I, I think maybe there's some potential there to, to grow and use them in different ways as well. But I, I think it would be cool if y'all could highlight and kind of show UMA how you use their product to um, such success, you know? Actually, Poopser, UMA's already <clears throat> reached out on this. So they've been really great. Clayton and Sean, um, they've suggested doing maybe like a, like like almost like a really quick article in the next week or so where it just like is kind of like a question and answer, like, hey, how'd you guys do this? Which I think would be really cool. And then they've also suggested something like publishing a case study. Like ask AMAs are good, but case studies can be kind of like shared broadly. Um, and again, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Badger's probably had the most success early on on this front. So publishing a case study could be like a, a template for other people to kind of do something similar. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy to... I, I think Clayton's on too. I'm sure he could talk a little bit about it, but I think, <clears throat> I think the idea is we definitely want to expand on the success and not just kind of like all be happy in the moment, but we want to, we want to share this and kind of figure out ways to, to spread this more broadly through DeFi. Yeah, I say, let's do it. I mean, we had a great, when we did that crossover call with them, that was really successful. And there was a lot of cross pollination. Like I know I see a bunch of people that were on that in ongoing, uh, dig stuff. So I think the more we can be cross pollinating, not only with Uma, but other DAOs that are like minded, I think we we should be doing that as part of our strategy going so my, forward. My my only so very selfishly here going back to the governance thing, I think this is where I would I, I promise you I I'm not I, I would freely and happily help let other people support some things if they wanted to. Right now, most of these things that kind of come into like the let's do it category typically fall on a very few individuals. And so if you think about like, just trying to keep options going every two weeks, updating snapshots, programming things in a dig.finance, getting round four going, writing proposals, trying to figure out the assets liabilities of a treasury, and then you know keep other things in line like TCL or getting things like governance going. I really think it would be beneficial just as a starting point, if there's like an idea, and I don't know if this is the right process, but even if there was just a way that we could formalize more dig channels whether that's in the badger discord or if we created kind of like a a dig kind of fanboy club discord channel where we could break out some things into like more activities i, I think that's where most everything it's it's not a matter of like should we do it everything i think everybody agrees that we should do all these things and i i do too the challenge is that it, it's it's mostly me trying to not be a bottleneck so that's where selfishly the governance thing comes in to be a really key. Um, and that kind of same, yeah. sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say 1500. Do you have idea? Like if, if we were voting on, um, dig governance stuff now regarding the civility vault, like, do you think there's kind of like a clear set of options that we could present to the community at this point as to like, the aggressiveness and goals of the of the stability vault, or do we need to do more to even formulate a good set of options? And they're just counter trading against each other. Well, one more thing I I kind of wanted to share, and this is a little bit this is in the same vein, but kind of off the record. Uh, but like, um, sushi's holding their like, uh, you know, the date uh, for September seventh, the date sushi was saved last year. They're holding a, another pixel party, and they're inviting all. Well, most of the, uh, I guess, uh, several of y'all already know about this, but um, uh, some, several of the uh, uh, people here are involved with it. But I think it would be really cool to like uh, get in there and coordinate something we could do for Dig. Um, I know that uh, there were some people helping out on the last one, but I think uh, they're really making more of a concerted effort to involve more of the community. Um, so uh, that's going to happen, like I said, on the seventh, and we'll be able to decide like. Uh, which PO apps we want to uh, use from our community, be it the Dig Dojos or any of the Badger community calls or anything like that, to allow um, people to participate and paint uh, faster on the canvas. But I think it's a really cool initiative, and I'm trying to uh, just get some support for it, I guess, from the Dig Badger community um, and from all the communities in general. Um, I think it's a great opportunity for us to like get involved in this, and it's going to be, I think, a really cool event. Hey, Spada. Yeah, awesome. I don't know if I'm you wanted to. Uh, I would love to. Sorry, it was. I wasn't. Hey, what's up? I didn't know if you wanted uh, to say anything. I just saw you come up. 
Yeah, I just wanted to mention, like, you know, very often it's overlooked, but because you know some of these smart contracts and strategies are being put into production, you know, are so novel and new, you got to take into consideration the appropriate security process that would need to be um, implemented before kind of users' funds touch it. So when you talk about the stability vault and having a variety of different strategies, like, you know, call it what it is, those strategies need to be developed, then they need to be tested and audited and a lot of that type of stuff. And like when we did stability vault originally, um, you know, it took us probably you know, two and a half months before it was ready for prime time. So just, again, just something to be conscious to from our experience building stability vault to where it is, is, you know, take into consideration probably a couple months and like knowing, knowing the, the current status of the market and how dynamic it is, um, you know, it's just something to keep in mind. I think, I think it's a good point. And I think, again, I'm going to, I'm going to shill this one more time, but I think it just goes back to the broader point, which is all, all these things we're talking about, like options, TCL, stability vault, treasury, balance sheet type stuff, um, or even Poopster, which you mentioned with Sushi. It's a great idea. It's, that's cool. That's neat. There's, there, there's lots of stuff coming out of this. Like for these things to work and work effectively and work securely, we've got to be, Dig's got to get better organized. And you don't need a token to do that. We just need a better process. We need we need more process. And so again, if I had to offer again, spot, I don't want to speak out of turn here, but if I had to offer one piece of like super practical and like just pragmatic advice, I think it'd be probably creating like a a dig fan club Discord server where we can break all these things out. And my my ask to this community would be like, let's all get in there and and organize more things around it better. Like let's 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 talk about things that you know. Mason's built a ton of awesome stuff around Treasury for Badger. Like we could probably do more around Dig, but like it can't be like one person that does it. We've got to figure out how to like support things more broadly. And I think the idea here is like with any um, kind of mini DAO or you know supporting something like this, there's an opportunity for. For people to to get in and get their hands dirty and learn and potentially um, find some compensation there. I, I again, I don't want to speak too much about stuff that I don't have the right to talk about, but I just think that if we're going to try to evolve dig, we've got to get more structured because, to spot his points, there's a ton of things we have to think about here. And right now, we're probably getting to a point where, as we stack more and more, we're going to slow innovation and slow growth because it's going through fewer and fewer people. We need to kind of build out and down and grow the the ecosphere of dig support. Yeah, and Wes, I, I agree with you completely. I don't I don't know if like a separate Discord server is the right answer. I'm I'm not sure what the right answer is to be honest. But like when it comes to speaking on the line, there is no speaking on the line because like we're all you know it's all it's all equal uh, level here, right? We're all just community members trying to uh, contribute and, and do our best across Badger and the Badger ecosystem. But you know, I think one thing that's important uh, as well in thinking about the support of dig outside of you know, how it's a revolving wheel of people being compensated and effort and all those types of things. Like there's all the tech side too, right? And it's hard, it's hard to to understand it unless you're in those weeds. But like, you know, you've probably heard this, everyone's probably heard this, like getting people to audit, getting really high quality um, smart contract auditors to prioritize and put your stuff forward is not easy. Um, so as part of that process, like obviously Badger has our smart contract review board. We have our internal team. We have a, you know, a longstanding relationship with Quantstamp. We're starting to build a new relationship with Code Arena. And like a lot of that can continue to be leveraged. Then you're looking yeah. at like delineation in the sand between like which individuals are dedicating more and more time and how that actually shakes out. Um, don't look at that separate from you know, what needs to happen on the other side, because to be able to, to get to a point from a technological standpoint to hold and, and, you know, sustain the dig infrastructure, you know, it's going to be, it's going to take some time. And, you know, that's always going to, you know, for, for the near future, I would assume there would always be a reliance here you know, at a minimum, you know, Badger's relationships with certain groups um, versus certain individuals on the team type thing. Yeah, I totally, I, I think, I think Spot, I know you jumped in towards the end where we're talking about Stability Vault. 
I, I'm at, I totally agree with you on that. My my point is actually less around the dev side and more just the the process of just supporting different and various things. Like I think that's part of the reason I love options is that it it basically outsources the development to Uma and we could focus on strategy. My I think stability salt stability vault aside, whatever we can do to better organize process is kind of my my push right now. Not necessarily trying to say we should go out and figure out how to bring in dev support because you're right we need to be very mindful that's that's always going to be a tie to probably badger in the for the foreseeable future in my mind but there's still a lot more we can do to better operationalize the community when we just think about all the other things we talked about whether it's treasury trying to allocate stuff write proposals write option enhancements changes run options like there's just a lot that's going into it right now that i think for a few of us, we're just trying to figure out like how can we, if if people want to talk about like governance and how to evolve and move towards a better process here, I think we have to first start with just like, well, how can we better organize the community to support these things? Because um, a lot of things, you know, can can start to slow down if we're if it's not if we're not expanding out. I think. Yeah, I agree. Like, there's a lot that goes on outside of like we we put the term like economics um kind of over that and like there's just so much that goes into different products and proposals and everything that we talked about that's not tech oriented or, or a tech lift uh, and i can understand from first-hand experience since you know well back in the day a lot of that was coming out of me before the team expanded and grew and the community actually became something so uh, I can appreciate how difficult it is, and I and I agree. There needs to be concentrated effort. There needs to be processes in place. There needs to be levels of ownership across uh, different individuals that are dedicated to certain parts of pushing things forward. I know we're over by ten minutes. So I appreciate everybody joining, but I I agree, and I I think that to me that's the first step. If if we're talking about governance, just to go back to Wasabi, your initial point, the first step. It's, I know it's fun to think about governance tokens, but the first step should be thinking about organizing process better. And then evolving in an organic way so that we can eventually get to a point where if that makes sense, we can cross that bridge. Much, much the same way like Zero DAO. I kind of look at Zero DAO as kind of a good example, although they didn't, you know, I know that the the genesis for Zero DAO is slightly different than Dig, but the fundamentals of like expanding out, I think, still apply in that case. Um sorry, Wasabi, I, I I did cut you off and I know we're over by 12 minutes. So what were you gonna say? Yeah, no, I was gonna try to, to bring it in for landing here. I mean, I'm I'm really interested in the stability of all thing and spot I, I really appreciate that point like the the green side of things is, is an aspect that i hadn't fully considered and i want to i'm going to make it my homework between now and the next one to kind of understand that aspect of it more and see like what is the design space we're working on what parameters can be tweaked within the confines of the audit that we already have um or what you know what can we do that's the intersection of possible within the existing tech and uh, economic uh, questions that we're looking at. So um, I think, I don't know, Wizek, what do you have any kind of suggested next steps in terms of the communication? Like maybe we spin up a, a thread in the, sorry, 1500 recent. Yeah, again, I, I think, you know, just digging into how any of those potential parameter changes can just affect, because what makes this both extremely and strategy extremely unique is that it's managing two assets simultaneously, which is very different from any vault that we've done before. Uh, so that's why there was you know, pretty extensive review um, and like a full blown audit by Quantstem on it. Uh, again, I'm just not sure any particular implications that can come from changing around certain parameter inputs or things along those lines, but again, just something to be conscious to. Um, so Wizek, should we just spin up a thread in the main dig about what is the best way people want to get go multi-channel in terms of our communications? I mean, like we can certainly get more threads under dig in the Badger Discord or spinning up something else to to talk about some of these threads. I'm kind of a, you know agnostic on the question, but it would be good to get some community feedback I think, on that. I think whatever makes the most sense. I, yeah, I wasn't trying to suggest we go to a different Discord server. We could create more, I, but I, I don't think it's just communication. To be very to be very clear here, I think. What I'm what I'm saying is like like if like the the more we want to do to Poopster's point, if we want to go out to sushi and see if we can do this, or if we want to try and like do more things, it's dependent on involving more people to to help with things. Like 
like the the challenge right now is just um, most, if not everything, dig related. That's like it's not really dev right now. Like I know like um, the stability vault is, but there's a lot of stuff just to keep options going, to iterate on options, and all these other things. Most, if not everything, kind of runs through like one or two people, and that that starts to get incredibly challenging. And so if we want to continue kind of like supporting more, it's not just for communication purposes. I, I think what I'm trying to say is like, we, we need more community involvement to some degree. And I think having more channels and more ways to break things out is an easy way for us to like, you know, have people come in and say like, hey, like, I think this is a good idea. Should we do it? If so, I can reach out to so-and-so and do it. And that can start to be more coordinated versus like a one to two channel process that we have today. That's that was my suggestion, I think. So let's uh, let's continue this conversation in the Discord. If there are any technical questions about redeeming the options, we're going to be available to answer them. Thanks everyone for coming. We have over 100 people in here today at one of the best uh, turnouts ever, and uh, it's all coming. I know we stayed a little bit over, but uh, appreciate everyone's time, and we will see you back here uh, next time for Dig Dojo. Take care, everyone.